tour bag of this six moto and it's a basket case i started working on this uh a little backstory about a year ago and uh when they first brought it to me they said it had no spark and uh, i diagnosed it i made a video about it i didn't post it because i was waiting for them to follow up and uh, finish the repair but they did not so here we are a year later, I negotiated with them for the bike. Now I own the bike. Now I'm going to finish the repair and I'm going to take you along with it. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm, I'm going to edit it, but I'll show you what I did first or I'll just continue from here and kind of like talk about it with the uh, stuff I did at the beginning. But this has a, uh, let, let's let's look, go around, take a look. All right, so this is a, a, a six moto. And uh, this sub model is, uh, uh, it's called a hold, a hold shot, they call it. And um, this, it's, you see, we got a kind of flat tire here. And uh, the front tires are a little bit flat too. I don't know if they're holding air or not. And then back here we have a brake. It looks a little rusty. Can you see that? Yeah. There's some rust happening there. It's a little sloppy. I'm not sure that just needs to be tightened up or not. Uh, we got an exhaust system here that's still intact. Uh, carburetor, gasoline. Yeah, this is disconnected because I had to drain the gasoline just to uh, rule out that you know there's no weird gas. This is going to be uh, for the uh, throttle right here to adjust the air-fuel mixture for uh, acceleration, deceleration. Okay, so we got that there. I don't know why that's loose, but hey, it is. So. And then over here, uh, I shouldn't have pulled on that too much there. No, I won't go back in. All right, that's great. Nope, there it is. All right, let's just, let's just tighten that down for now. So that's tying down. We got a pull start. So it seems like it's one of those pull starts where it has like a, um, it's an, an assist. It kind of helps you generate uh, torque. Um, not, to, I don't know, not just torque, but you know, velocity at which this will spin. Uh, it doesn't sound right, but whatever. Oh. We'll go with it. Uh, all the plastics are in place. We have a uh, handle here that's kind of loose. All right, so I probably can tighten that up. This would be the throttle. So this is going to be attached to uh, this here. Got a back brake. Uh, that works still. Looks like it needs to be yeah, kind of aligned and tightened down. I don't know if it's broken or not. But one thing I don't like about these uh, hole shots, right? You see, you see the range of motion that we get when we uh, turn a steering wheel. So that's as far as it goes, right? And they do that because this tank is in the way. And uh, so what they do is right in here, see this right here, uh -huh, right there, they use that as a stopper. I don't know if you can see it. And uh, this here will stop it from turning too far to go right into there. But it sucks, you know. The solution would be to just cut that off. But if you cut that off, this tank will get smashed, and it's plastic. So you know that. You know that goes. Uh, we got a cap here. All right, pretty good. Uh, there's no fuel in it, so can't see much. 
but there's no fuel in there. I drained it all out. And then we have a key to kill. So this kill it goes on to here. I don't know if it kills or starts. I just don't remember. I think it goes on top of here. Yeah, like that. So that's how that works. Front brake. Well, it looks like it's null and void. So oh, here we go. So here's our front brake. So we have an attachment here. It just looks like it's not attached. But then goes all the way down to right here and it's attached to a missing attached to nothing the entire brake caliper it's gone from the front you can see it's a front brake caliper also all right so this is the most important part it's this kill switch here so this wire here this would be kill wire kind of goes all the way around to like right here right here it comes around right here it gets grounded to the chassis no did I get that right let's see this wire here Goes into there. All right. Something there. I don't know what it is. Either way, the wire that comes out gets grounded to the chassis right here, and then it kind of continues. So it's kind of splices, and then continues to to here. This is important because this is the wire you want to disconnect from the uh, um, what do you call it um, magneto if, to check to see if you have spark if this is disconnected and you're pulling on it and you have no spark you have a failed magneto the probability is really high uh, most likely is, is the magneto has failed the second thing that can happen is that you'll have a failed um, you know the magnets on the flywheel here will fail that's super rare so it's usually the magneto I already installed the new magneto but we're gonna I'm gonna give you some specifications on like what the ohms ratings look like on a failed magneto and on a new magneto so you can compare the two if you have an ohm meter just to verify that your uh, magneto has failed using an ohm meter but other than that it's really easy to diagnose you pull on it you see no spark you got no you got a failed magneto if this is disconnected because that's the only thing that grounds it out. So we're gonna sh I'm gonna test this uh, resistance on this uh, on these magnetos, right? And uh, this is the old one. No, I'm sorry. This is the new one, and this is the old one. And uh, I'm gonna show you read the resistance values on here. You can see where they differ, and that's how I'm assuming that that's where the failure is. So, I'm going to put this in resistance right here, okay, and uh, we're going to touch them, oops, sorry about that, in the same location, right, and you'll see that there'll be some similarities and then there'll be some differences, right, and the differences are pretty obvious, or shall I say the difference is, is obvious, that means I already know the values, I'm just showing you. So we're going to check and see that we have resistance, I mean uh, continuity, which we have 0.5 ohms in resistance. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to go uh, from the bad one to the good one. Okay, this is the good one, this is the bad one. Alright, we're going to go from this end here to this, to this leg to this leg, right? So we have 0 0.5, 0 0.6 ohms, okay? Same thing over here. So let's flip it that way. So you can, now they're both the same, so that way you won't get confused. So from here to here, right, we have, let's see what we had. 
0.6 ohms, right? From here to here, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 ohms, right? Okay. So let's just double check. We're gonna go down here, to down here to down here. 0.6, yep, so it's the same, right? These layers of metal all seem to have the same amount of continuity. Okay, good. All right, next we're gonna go from the inside of the spark plug, right? This is the uh, bad one on the left side here. So I'm gonna go inside the spark plug. Then we're gonna go to one of these legs, the first one. So we have 1.8 to 1. Point, okay, 1.81 kilo ohms. So 1.82 kilo ohms. Okay. Uh, same thing over here. Two point four nine kilo ohms. So we're starting to see some differences in values here. Okay, so we're gonna go from the bad one again on the knee the spark plug boot here. I'm gonna go from there to the other leg. 1.8. I'm gonna go to the good. Two point four nine. So this is 1.8 from the legs to the coil, to the uh, top of the spark plug boot, and this is 2.4. 2.49 kilo ohms, okay? So that's our first difference in value. All right, the next thing we're gonna look at, right, is uh, what happens from this kill switch to the boot. So from the kill switch to here, we have an open circuit, yes. No, we have 2.349, 2.35 kilo ohms, okay. On the good one, from the top of the spark plug to here, we have 2.96, okay. Now we're gonna go from the uh, uh, pretty much it. That's what we, we pretty much covered it. So the difference from the spark plug to the legs is really what we're seeing. The difference, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty strange, right? It's not interesting. It's having a hard time getting a solid value right here versus this. Two one hundred and twenty thirty five fifteen forty one kilo. These are all ohms. So yeah, the variation is from the the boot to here, and uh, that's one point eight, and this is going to be two point four seven four eight seven kilo ohms. And this is, again, one more time, 1.84 kilo ohms. So we're off by like 
one kilo ohm. And I think this is why this is fail and this is good. It's from that measurement that's that's what differs so much, you know? All right, so you can see right here, right? These are magnets and these magnets right here, they have an air gap they need to have from the... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna... Um, Take the air, air I had to set the air gap from the magneto oh, to this, things. right? <laughs> Thank you. Um, to do that, right, we're gonna use a, a piece of a business card, and that'll work perfectly for setting the uh, the distance. So there we go. We'll take the uh, the new magneto comes with this wire here. You don't need it. So we're gonna take it off. I'll give you the part number for it and a link. Check the link in the description for the actual magneto itself. So I'm just gonna put that right here and then that's gonna set our ear gap. Okay. Get two of these here. And these are a uh, four, number four sized metric. That's good, we're gonna pop this off. We don't need this. We're gonna save it. Pull out the card. So now we should have a spark enabled machine. We're not gonna attach the kill switch yet because we, we need to test to see if uh, we're gonna have spark. So we're gonna pull that out. I wonder if we're gonna test. So this is gonna be a 3 fourths of an inch socket on this spark plug. I don't think this is the original spark plug that came with it. I believe this is just another brand I'll give you the uh, part number for it in the description below. It's an E3 and it works for this engine block. Now, I gotta be honest, right? I mean, this is a gift I'm giving my, uh, my kid and uh, she's amazing. And uh, in a perfect world, I would probably rebuild this. But I won't really give it to her in a short amount of time. So I'm not going to rebuild it. I'm going to leave this alone, right? So, you know, let's see. We're going to put this on here, right? And we're going to try to see if we have spark. All right, so the first thing we want to do is kind of establish uh, the orientation of this pull star turns, right? So when we pull on it, we can see it's going that way, clockwise, right? And uh, we need to turn this engine over, right? So this here is a 12 millimeter. And uh, we're gonna take that, use this drill, a regular drill, not an impact one. You don't wanna use an impact, right? And just turn it over. Well, you could use an impact as long as it doesn't have a lot of uh, you know, resistance. 
from the engine, otherwise it'll just destroy that bolt. So try to give you the best view possible. So look right here and see if you can see spark. All right, yeah, there is spark, but it's super, super faint. Let's put the uh, original pull start on and see if uh, see if we can uh, get this to work or not. Okay, I can tell you one thing that uh, the the uh, it sounds weird that original pull start. So the original pull start has been installed, reinstalled. I want you to look right here and see if we can see it better. If we can get more spark this thing. I just think the, uh, the drill doesn't have enough RPMs to do it. So It's an old drill. It's dying. Alright, take a look right here. Let's see if you can see any spark. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to make some test leads, right? This is a little easier to work with. So you get some wire. like that. It's great wire strippers. Can't stress how amazing they are. Make life so easy. And then take your test leads. Your, uh, put those in here. I'll strip off some more. Since these are non-insulated, right, we can go, you want to use this crimper, amazing. And we're going to, so it works well for insulated and non-insulated, non-insulated and insulated. This is going to be a non-insulated. So we're going to take that, put it in the non-insulated part. This. Slide the wire in. Squeeze down. There we go. Is that any better? That's not too good. Let's try coming down a little bit on this side here. What's happened is the wire, the gauge is too uh, small, so I'm not getting a good crimp on the end because of that. I think I think that's enough. We kind of like went around. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. You don't need to see me do it. Well, actually, I'll just do it since you're here. Double it like this. And then we're gonna see if we can slide it into here. Yeah, that's much better. That's uh, gonna. way better already. There you go. So that's how you can handle wire that's like way, 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 way small for the alligator clip. That's what that is. That's too long. Okay, that's it. We're good to go. We're going to use these for our test leads. Alright, so we're going to try to start this. It's the kill wire. Let's make sure we get this out of the way. Um, to do that, so this is the old pull start, and uh, I'm gonna put a little carb cleaner. All right, this is uh, very flammable, and uh, I want to show you something. Sorry, this is brake cleaner. This is brake cleaner. 
This is non-flammable. Don't waste your time spraying this inside of there and trying to start the engine. Don't tell me. I won't tell you how I know. All I can tell you is just don't do it. I won't light. Okay. I can't really see spark because it's too bright out here, but I know it's sparking, right? This is our spark plug, right? We're gonna take some flammable brake parts cleaner and we're gonna spray it in the uh, cylinder head. Nice dose, let's do a little bit more. One more, two more, I guess. Take the spark plug. Try to start it. Do a little bit. Open up the throttle a little. Ah. You hear that? Okay, that's a problem. Yeah. So this can't turn. It can't grab the pawns and turn the engine over with the uh, spark plug in there because there's too much compression right it only works when this is out that means this is failing uh, the inside of here are some springs and the springs have uh, come lo loose or detach that's what that sound is I, I knew if something wasn't right but that's what we're that's what we're experiencing so we're going to change this whole start so we get a new pull start. It's all metal. I'll, uh, I'll show you the part number. I'll, I'll share with you the part number and the link to get this pull start. It seems like it's an upgrade. Now, there's a trick to put it on the pull start, right? To uh, you got to get the pawns lined up, the little tiny plastic tabs that stick out on here. So that way they mesh together. So you do that, you just kind of pull up on it gently until this like snaps into place. And then now you know you're, uh, everything's lined up. The nice thing about this pull starter that comes with the, the screws. So if you don't have the screws, it's a great purchase. We already have some brake parts cleaner in there, and uh, we just need to try to pull on it. Let's see what happens. Get a little throttle open. Uh, that's a good sound. Spray ahead of it with a little bit more uh, carb. Break cleaner. Alright. Alright, there you go. So you saw that. We got a we got a functional machine. At least the engine part. Um, we need to see we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, we gotta Hope that carburetor is fine. You know, I don't know what we are getting ourselves into with this machine, but we'll find out. So we're gonna put some fuel in here. We're gonna use some 50 to one. And pop that off. Now the reason why I want to use this 50 to one is because it's already pre-mixed. And it's ethanol free, which is really, really, really important. Um, since like ethanol just destroys carburetors fuel lines so use this if you can afford it since the uh, fuel line is loose here right we're gonna just make sure we got a good flow so pour a little 50 to 1 in just see what comes out if anything comes out 
Yeah, there we go. We got flow. That's good. All right, good. So we're gonna go ahead and attach this fuel line. This fuel line here. clamp is pretty much useless. It's got like no spray action whatsoever on this thing. Right, okay. Let's put that there. Now we gotta set this to let the fuel flow to the carburetor so we gotta do that. We have to go in the on position which I think this is up and down for on. Usually it follows the, the line of the fuel of the uh, fuel line or hose. So that should be on. Let's see if this will actually run now by itself. And actually before we do that, I wanna see if there's any kind of like idle adjustment on this carburetor. I really don't know. If there is, what is this? Hmm. Choke, no choke? Bet you that's a choke. I don't know. Uh, let's just leave it up and see where it goes. So, got that there. All right, let's do it. So we can't do this yet, only because there's no way to turn it off if it starts. So we have to uh, take this off and actually connect the uh, kill switch. So this is our kill switch. Now we're ready. I don't know, what do you think? We should put it through here? Yeah, let's put it through here. This will probably help it not vibrate free. Maybe. Give it a fighting chance. So I have a vague memory how this thing works. I think you need to put this here. See there's a little button inside of it? It has to push down on that. Like that. And I think it's for emergencies if this pops off. It'll complete the circuit and kill spark. But if you want to turn it off, I think you just hit that button, I think. So let's uh let's see if it'll work on the fuel that we put inside of it. You missed a lot of stuff because uh, the camera ran out of battery. But um, this here is your choke. So start it like this for a cold start. Up and then down once you hear it pop over into the no choke position. And if you can see, this is off right here. So if you turn it, Look at the bottom, you can see it says on. You see that right there? On. So there's an on and off position. I don't know which one's on or off. I, my, my hunch is this. This is on because that's how it's always everything else I've ever worked on in my life. It's always on. So we'll leave it like that for now. So this is what I saw. Okay. So right in here, it's hiding. I'll try to put my screwdriver right down in there. Can you see it? Screwdriver, yeah. Uh, I think you can. Okay, right there is our, can you see my screwdriver? There's my finger, hold on. There's my finger, finger, okay, finger. Fingering you. All right, perfect. 
and here's the screwdriver. And that right there is going to be my idle screw. So you can adjust it from that right there. So let's go ahead and I'm going to turn it in like uh, half, halfway in. And then we'll go from there. <laughs> I think that was a little too much throttle. Yeah, okay. You gotta be careful. <laughs> that was crazy, right? Yeah, okay. Let's try that again. actually kick the chain off that's crazy uh, all right <laughs> during our little incident the chain actually flew off that's how crazy that was but it's good for us though because we don't have to worry about it taking off it's gonna worry about the island yeah okay let's make sure it didn't damage anything yeah, it looks good all right I'm gonna play around with that for a little bit now we're getting a little closer. Let's turn it a little bit more. It was really far out. I don't know why, but whatever. Let's try that. I'm never really a big fan of the way these uh, carburetors run on these machines. Also, there's no high or low adjustment for them, it's just idle. So then the idle circuit's a little, maybe like clogged or so. Maybe that's why they had turned it up all the way. Uh, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is, uh, probably gonna take the carburetor off and have to clean that. And see if that makes a difference. All right. This is not really practical to hold this down, but we're gonna get the carburetor out from right here. And the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna loosen the uh, this air filter. Try to get it off. Can't really do that holding it. Let's see. I 
It's pretty tight in there. Hmm. Let's see what we got. So this is not exactly the easiest thing to get off. Uh, kind of have to see it bumps up against the frame right here. So we have a little different game plan. We got to kind of move the engine so I gain access to the um, air filter. So we are going to loosen this up. I don't think this is the right tool for the job, but we'll see. All right, well, it's not too bad. I thought it was going to be pretty tight. This is an S5. It's a, a metric hex size. Just need to move this forward just a little bit. And this is the bottom of the machine where you bolt the um, motor. Not the most serviceable design, but don't believe they were thinking about people servicing this. Okay, so here we go. So the engine is far forward enough. This is our. I already loosened that, so should it kind of get that out of there? Maybe without too much fuss. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. That was a lot of, whole lot of fighting for poor design. So we have a, like a Phillips right here that holds on this black adapter boot. And then right here is going to be our bolts to, dis, to disconnect our um, carburetor from the engine. So. I'm going to try to do this without removing the engine completely, so I'm going to try to... I'll get in here with a little, like, screwdriver and stuff and see what I can do. It's got a little Phillips on there. Yeah, that's what we got. It's a little Phillips. The same on the other side. So we need to kind of take this... Clamp here and slide it up. Feeling a little desperate here. I don't really have a lot of my tools with me right now. Make a trusty container of consumable. Yogurt, well, consumed yogurt. So, yeah. Let's get that out there. Let that drip for a little bit. Not much in there. But... Too bad. It's blue. Oops, it's spilling. Great. So I'm thinking it would be best to get the um, throttle out. All this does is just plunge. It's a plunger and it goes up and you turn the throttle to increase the air fuel mixture. When you idle, it just drops back down. So I need to kind of just get it loose just so we can kind of spin it out of the carburetor okay so uh there you go so that's our plunger and, uh, yep, that just kind of goes down inside of the carburetor and meters how much air and fuel is mixed all right, so we're going to need to get the carburetor out of here. And there's 
too um, very difficult to get to uh, hex. Wow. All right, these are going to be uh, P4. P4 metric, ooh, oops, P4 metric ones. And they're going to be two really long bolts we need to get to. Our prize possession right here. So this is our carburetor. And it has forty four dash six two one one underneath it. Don't know. Yep, hopefully you can see that. If you're looking for this carburetor, it's 44 dash six two one one. And I don't know who makes this carburetor. Oh, Z Fong, that's the name. Z Fong. So, all right. We're going to try to rebuild this. I'm going to clean it anyway and see if it makes a difference in the way this runs. And that's the choke that no longer chokes. That's good to know. So that choke is useless. That wasn't even doing anything. See, this is. Oh, yeah, it was. Okay. Never mind. It did. Okay. All right. So we're going to try to pull this apart, clean it, and see. If we get any difference in the way that it runs, it idles. All right, let's tear into this carburetor. We got ourselves a P2 Phillips, and uh, I'm gonna get that gasket off. Hmm. Right, cross that bridge when we got there. seem to have an orientation. Yes, it does. That uh, curvy part, the little bevel here was uh, facing downwards. Okay, so gotta remember that. That sits on top of here like that. Neat. Not opened one of these before. Okay, we'll kind of so we can slide it out through here. Yeah. So we already lost okay, we are. the uh, pin that holds this already came out, so now we're good. And there's a needle and seat right here. All right, pretty straightforward. There's a gasket here, but I don't know how much it's going to fight us. Hmm. I don't even know if there's a rebuild kit for this. Flathead. Oh, let's see. So this is the only adjustment this carburetor has for idle. Nice and 
Sometimes you just keep these old screwdrivers in service because they're good to pound on. So that's that. At the top here we have on and off. Don't don't strip. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. So tight, tight. Oh, wow. Oh, this is kind of crazy. Right. So that's a little old ring right here. And a screen, so we'll keep that like that. I won't put that in the ultrasonic cleaner because uh, it's in carburetor cleaner and it'll just kind of destroy that o ring. Um, but we do need to, let's see, let me see if that's clear. But Passage distance. Try some light in there and see if I can see through the hole here in this pilot pilot jet. Oh, that's a little clogged, isn't it? Yeah. Nope, it's not clogged. It's open. Okay. So that's a good sign. Um, Alright, so we gotta get um, this hose off. Alright, that hose is off. And then we need to get these uh, gaskets out, so. Get this out without damaging it. This is, uh, this is cooperating or, or lucky here. Or kind of well. All right, perfect. There you go. So that's that. There's another one right here in the front. So let's see if we can get that off. Hopefully we're not too much fuss. Alright, let me get a razor. Alright, so got a razor. I'm try to kind of save this gasket. What I'll do now that I have the information about the uh, carburetor, I'll try to see if there's a, a kit, like a rebuild kit for this, you know, and uh, see if uh, it has like a new seat, you know, that, that would be uh, this right here, a ring, I don't know. Oh, these carburetors are so cheap anyway, you know, you can just pretty much just buy a new one. But we're trying to we're trying to see what's possible, how good we are. All right, so that's it. We can put that in the ultrasonic cleaner. This is in the ultrasonic cleaner, and we'll put. Nope, not this. Yeah, that's not gonna. That looks clogged, ish. Something weird is happening in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. You see that? It's like brown or something. 
Yeah, I don't know what that is. So let's uh let's investigate that for let's poke at it a little. Let's see. Use a blunt object. Wow, that's pretty strange. It might be just glue that they <laughs> that they used to hold this on. That's neat. Okay. Not the most uh, neat approach to engineering, but they had to get it done. So, all right, we're gonna not put that in the carburetor cleaner. Uh, this has a small O-ring here and a gasket right here, and a mesh filter right here. A little hard to see. We are not gonna put that in the ultrasonic cleaner either. So let's just. Uh, Leave, leave well enough alone. I don't know. It also has like a rubber o-ring. Yeah. All right. Let's so let's do that. Let's see what happens. All right. Let's put this back together. Uh, we done a pretty good, I guess, cleaning. Uh, I should blow some air through this, but that looks pretty good to me. Probably gonna bite me in the butt if I don't do it, you know? That's usually how it works. Alright, so. Well, what I'm doing, I'm looking, I'm shining light down this path here, this passage here, to see if I can see to the other side over here, which I do. So, we have no blockage there. And this, um, the needle on this carburetor, um, this, this style of needle has a rubber, rubber needle on the the very front of it. I can see that. It's it's got a rubber on there. Alright, so that means inside of here where it sits right here. Oops, sorry. This hole here. That's gonna be aluminum in there, and uh, it should, for the most part, be very um, clean. So, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna fire up the compressor and kind of blow some air through this. Got to be careful a little bit because you don't want to ruin any check valves. All right, let's do it. Here's something I should have done. Um, we should have loosened, uh, removed this. And cleaned it separately. I threw it in the, in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. This often will get clogged, but yeah, so we're gonna have to try to, you know, clean this, poke it a little bit, clean that, poke it a little bit also. All right, so this is a little hard to show you. I'll try my best. All right, this is the main jet, okay? And there's a hole in this main jet. And it's not particularly easy to see, but what I'm trying to do is uh, get a light, behind it so you can see uh, the passage of this main jet even though it was an ultrasonic cleaner and I didn't pull it out which I should have right it's a little clogged uh, it's a little clogged so we need to unclog it that'll make it not idle for sure 
uh, how we're going to do that. All right, we have these little tiny needles, right? And uh, they're 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 for like a hand drill. And what we're going to do, we're just going to try to find the one that matches the diameter and just poke it through. So let's go ahead and get on that, shall we? pretty small. Right, so we're just kind of going to have to just pull one out and see what happens. Let's go for 75. something in there. I don't know what which one it is, but I'm doing the, the dull side of the drill bit, so we're going to get a 72. As the numbers get larger, the bits get smaller. So, there you go. So there you go. Yep, there was definitely something inside of there. So we're all the way through. See that? Alright. These are super, super difficult to work with. To put back into uh, position, you know? Yeah, alright. Let me double check that. Shine a little light through it. Oh wow, that's great. You can't see, but um, let's, let's go like the 72 again. See if that makes a difference. If that can get through. Yep, 72 now can pass through. So there's a little bit of junk in there, you know. A little bit of junk, not too much. Pretty good. One time in the in the, I was working on. A, I think it was a blower. I think it was a blower. Or, yeah, and uh, that thing would not, it would just fall flat on its face every time. And uh, the, uh, I contacted the manufacturer telling them my problem, you know, which is so cool when a manufacturer can give you a little bit of information as how to repair their own product, you know. It's, it's just a dying thing, by the way. It's like... Usually it's just, I just went up a little bit bigger, but that's, that's it. 72 is the perfect size. And um, what happened was uh, 71 doesn't work. The, uh, the manufacturer sent, back, sent me back an email saying, yeah, try um, increasing the diameter of the, uh, the main jet, which is what this is. Long and behold, I did it. And the thing worked really well. So... You know, I wouldn't have wouldn't have been able to do it without this set right here. So I'll put a link in the description. But I highly recommend it. This thing is a game changer. All right, let's continue to put this uh, back together, shall we? All right. So main jet looks great. Let me just check again. Yep. It's sands any debris. Um, do need to kind of blow these out, so let's. Right, so I moved all the uh, small bits out of the way, so we don't blow them away forever. I'm just trying to hit the passages. That's good. Stuff's coming out right there. So 
Slow down there, tiger. The little tiny, uh, the very top inside of here is a little fuel passage. Don't see. I don't know what feeds it. I could spray brake parts cleaner in here. Try to get a feel. Alright, that's it. Alright, let's put this thing together. Alright, here we go. So, it's been a couple days. Hmm. Alright, so we have a couple fasteners right We have some short ones here, two short ones or two longer ones. And, uh, alright, so right here is going to be the two shorter ones. So, that is for this. This has a O ring right here, don't forget. And that goes like that. I'm going to take the smaller screws. Just kind of get them in here. Does that make sense? Go in the right direction. I feel like this is in my way, doesn't it? Choke it, that's not good. So, I think about this here. What's going on? That's a choke. Oh, I see. Is that right? Couldn't be like that. Maybe it's just bent. Alright, let's try that again. Yeah, it's just bent. Okay. Well, that was weird, man. Awkward. I can reason to smaller ones of the set. The fasteners. Try not to wash you out with my uh my uh, my light. I really can't see. Alright, the main jet is back in already. I didn't show you that. Let's just screw that back in. Alright, the next part is going to be uh, this is a side meter and jet for, uh, for idle. And uh, that goes into right here. The hose is going to come out of right there, so it's the side of the hose. So we're going to screw that uh, all the way down to the bottom's out, and we're going we're gonna to come back uh, one full turn. It was out, it was out like way too far. When we first uh, started to play with this, that's bottomed out, right? I'm going to come out like half full, like that. Okay, it's a good place to start. All right, um, now we have this side, right? Um, we've got ourselves new in seats, right? and I'm going to go like that. lined up. Okay. Now this was like that. Remember that part that protrudes from it was facing down. So we need to put 
with this gasket back on. Oops, that's not right. Like this. Yeah. I don't see anything that holds onto this. It just literally just floats on top of there. So that's what we're doing. Put that in like that. And we're going to take the longer brass screws here. I want to kind of just kind of help myself out, so this is going to be this is going to be choke because I'm going to put a mark right here. The C. There you go. Just to give me an idea, that's open. So I'm going to put an O right here because I just can't. That's familiar with this when it's installed. So that's open, and that's to put a letter C up there for choke. So choke, open. All right. All right. What's next? So we need to get this on. Something like this, like that. Is that right? Does it look right? I don't think so. All right, we'll figure it out. We gotta put this, uh, put this on. So that goes through the little part of the carburetor here at the bottom. All right, so we gotta kind of figure this out here. We are Take this here and slide it back through the bottom of this carburetor. This is like an overflow, I believe. Yeah. So take some silicone spray. And, uh, I'm just gonna help make our lives easier. So we're gonna go. It's gonna go like that. All right. Great. I don't know what people did with that silicone spray. Stuff is like a game changer. Know what I mean? Let's slide it through. I'm just gonna pop this up right here into like that. Good. Yeah. So that's it. We're all back together. Um, we need to put some other parts on here. Yeah. So it looks like something like that gets bolted on. Yeah, like that. All right, so we got to kind of put um, the machine back together so we can test this. You see me pull it apart? I'm not going to show you how to put it back on the machine, but you get the idea. All right, this was a serious ordeal. I had to pull the carburetor all the way off to do this. I want to talk to you about it so you don't make the same mistake. Okay, so this plunger, you see, take a look. It's got like a little groove here. And also right here, this groove right is for the cable. It has to sit in there. So make sure you can that that sits inside the groove, right? The cable. Right? This is to pull it up and down. And this groove here is keyed with inside the carburetor. So inside the carburetor, hard to see. Inside the carburetor, see that jet right there at the top where my uh, pointer finger is? That right there has to line up. That brass jet sticking out has to line up with that groove right there. And it sits like that all the way down. Make sure you get that all the way down just like that. Screw it in right now because it's much easier than trying to do it with the carburetor in. Okay. There you go, like that. And then you just put the carburetor back in, follow the video like I did. All right, just wanted to make your life a lot easier with that little bit of information. This like adapter, right, that goes into the air filter like this. And this screws into the carburetor. The issue I'm having is this screw that goes into here is for the most part 
it's it's just too it's just cheap plastic it's going into so it's pretty it's useless at this point so i had to get these small washers really small washers i'll give you the uh, i'll have a link for you All right and i'm gonna have to slide that in there right in here and uh, i'm going to need to because it just doesn't fit easily right i'm gonna have to do something either heat it up and push it in you know or uh, what can we do can we just force it in there with uh, a little bit of persuasion let's see I mean, it's closer, but... Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, I'm gonna have to heat it up and kind of like slide it in, you know. Or I can just kind of grind off a little bit off of one side. Yeah, either way, something has to be done because I can't just put the screw in anymore. It, uh, <laughs> that ship has sailed. So we can file this down a little. Of a file. Let's see. What we got. That's even less aggressive. All right, so we're kind of aiming for that shape. Sorry, is it flattened out piece right there? That's what we want. I think that should work. That should. That should. Uh, go into there a little easier. So keep doing that. Do to both of them, and we'll push it in and see what we get. So that's our final shape until I take a little bit off of all like three sides. Well, <laughs> there's only one side in a circle, the outside, but I kind of just had to shave off a little bit on three sides. Why do I keep saying that? Okay, you get my point, okay? So that's it, that kind of worked. That slides right in. Let's see right here. For not so much on the dark side of the moon. There we go. That slides in. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And then now we're able to uh, to get the screw lined up. So, all right, do the same for the other side, and uh, we'll proceed. I will do the same. This machine is so clapped out. Do you see that? So I had to loosen up the ground strap. To kind of like maneuver the engine to make it more flexible. Ah. To make it more flexible to like work on, right? The ground strap goes right here. Do you see what I'm seeing? It's completely broken off, off of the engine itself. Not a big deal because, you know, We'll still be able to squeeze the bolt onto it, but I just wanted to show it to you. Pretty clapped out. How are you going to turn it off, right? I think now would be a good time to put the chain incident to the back of us. So. Yep, this chain came out when we were uh, just kind of testing it, you know? little pinned if you get my drift. Hmm. Does anybody use steel anymore? Jesus. Alright, there we 
go. Right, so we're gonna try to slide that on. There you go. And since the engine is loose, it feels like Jumanji. How do I get to decide your happiness? You get to choose your adventure and what you think you're gonna wanna watch. Well, either way, it's hard to get a good angle to show you, so I'm doing my best. So there's my problem where I have to get this chain around that sprocket. Oh, cow boy. <laughs> light down, light down, light down. Jam that in there. Let's see. What can we do? this uh, I don't really have a lot a lot of room you know I think I'm gonna have to loosen up the wheel to get this on I thought the engine being loose yeah I'm gonna have to loosen up the wheel oh well I tried there really need to be a law to outlaw the adjustable wrench I swear to god what is this like you know what I mean it's just uh it's insane. Just buy the tool. So this is like a uh, not even an 18. It's probably a 17 millimeter that's has been abused all its life with an adjustable wrench. Yeah, it's totally a 17. That's pretty good. Right, so I believe that's loose. Right, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, but that's gonna be a uh, 14 millimeter. So we gotta slide this for we gotta loosen these adjusters up just so we can like pull the wheel forwards and then pull it back. So this is a 10 millimeter. We're gonna we need to kind of get this. Adjust it back so we can kind of slide. We need some room. Why is this like? All right, so that's that's done. Let's do the other. Swear to God, the dark side of the moon. Here we are. So this should give us enough room now to kind of slide the wheel forwards. It's like back, forwards like that. And that should help us get that chain on. Look right there. See if we can successfully get this chain on. First. Okay. Yep, that's the way to go. Yep. Front first, back a little bit, and then turn it. All right. So now that we have that on in both sides, all right. Let's go ahead and. Uh, Tighten this back up, so we're going to tension it with a 10 millimeter. Yeah, 
easier to do by hand like this. Why is there not like a washer in between this? This I don't know. I'll do the same on the other side, right? Yeah. This really should have a washer in between. Yeah. Because it's just eating into the uh into this metal frame and it's kind of like, can you see what I'm doing? Oh, you can. Right, sorry. There you go. So I just kind of turn this in and then I was saying it should, uh, it needs a washer here. Yeah. All right, so this side, same thing. This is uh, kind of important to get this centered because you don't want it to pull too much to to one side. This guard here is a little little on the wrong side of the uh, of things. Okay, so. All right, that's a little better. Chain tension is very loose, so that's not good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna crank down on it some more so we get this chain a little tighter. So before I go too far with uh, tension, um, so yeah, sorry, hair, I got looking up under, and this plate here is where the engine gets mounted to. These bolts need to be tighten down first. You can see these two are going to be easy. That one, uh, this side's a little, has to be pulled out, cockeyed a little bit. So I'm going to catch those, tighten those down first, then continue to, do ten to tension the, the chain and see if we get a better result. Yeah. I had to flip this thing over on the side just to get these bolts started. Catch them by hand. If you don't do that, you're going to screw yourself over because this is chainesium. It's very cheap aluminum and you will strip it out. So get these started by hand, right? And then you want to tighten them down after you put the chain on. Get the chain on, then pull this, align the engine so it doesn't hit this chain guard because it does have some room to go up and uh, I guess uh, on the short axis of the actual uh, vehicle itself. You can see now we've got some pretty good tension on this chain. So go ahead and uh, tighten up the bolts now because we just tension all of those and we gotta like tighten these down. All right, so this is a size six millimeter. I'm gonna go underneath here. Let's tighten all four of these up. Remember, don't use any power tools on this. It's just the uh, pure fact that this is really cheap aluminum and it will strip. So, avoid the power tools. So, I'm trying to share with you this by hand. Take it on. So, I put it on and take it off by hand. All right. One more to go. This is a 14 mil. Oh yeah, that's that's definitely getting tighter. Let's see if it spins from the. I think it spins all the way through. Yeah, it does. I got to go on the other side. All right. 
and put a 15 on the other side. Now I'll put a 14 wrench on this side and then I'll put the 17 on that side. All right, so we got a 17 on this side. Yep. All right. And then we're gonna put the uh, cordless 14 on the other side. That's it. All right, so this comes with a really flimsy hose clamp. I think we might want to replace this. Let's just see how it feels. So that's down. All right, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's a keeper. Can you see? Yeah. It's not too bad. It's a keeper. All right. We got to put that kill start back. All right, so here's our problem. Right? Oops. This is our kill start wire. And this needs to be grounded to the engine block. And right now this is completely separated from the engine block. The engine block right here is broken off. Uh, we get it grounded to a different place, right? So we do have choices. We just need to choose one. All right, that engine is supported at the top with this little plate right here. Now this plate comes off. It looks like you can buy another one. The only thing is I don't know for sure. All right, but it's broken off. And I can just go ahead and take this here and screw it on to anywhere on this engine. But I don't want to do that. Right? And I can't really weld this stuff for two reasons. One, I don't have a welder. And two, I think this is some cheap stuff. I'm not really sure. And either way, I'll have to kind of line it up again. So I think what we're going to have to do is look for that part. If I find it, great. If I don't, not so great. Um, I'm going to leave that off for now, that kill switch, the ground, and then we'll, we'll put the rest together, test it, and we can see if we can find that part and order it. If not, then we're just going to move forward. All right. All right, let's see if we can make sense of this death trap. Uh, so that's kind of useless, right? And we have three Phillips screws. One of these, or all of these, I hope, at least two or three, could probably get some... This is definitely poorly designed because I don't know how this is going to work without like a set screw, you know, or so it just doesn't stay. Hmm. It's not powerful anymore. It, it actually does st stay on. But so much tension you can get on this thing here. <clears throat> All right, that's the best we can do for now. I don't know what else we can say I can do, but at least it's not coming off. It used to just pull right off. Get blinded by the sun, but uh, bear with me. Okay, 
So you can see that this linkage here, the throttle linkage, that is a little cockeyed. I don't know how it got that way. And we need to get that straightened up a little before we can begin to think that we're gonna screw that back in. There you go. Let's let's square it off. Okay, right, now it spins. There you go. Okay, so question is, can we spin this in now? Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, is this is this a lost cause? I mean, I don't think so. It feels like it caught something. Hmm. Blinded by the light. Alright. There's definitely some cross threading happening at some point. Wasn't me. Right, let's try that. There we go. Blinded by the light. Okay. Alright, that's good. We did it. We did a thing. Can you see? Oh, Jesus. Worst video ever. Try that. The question is, why didn't they try to, like, fix this? Right, let's take a stab at this front brake. So, the cable in is still here. Alright, this is going to be the... Uh, Alright, that goes out like that. This has to go through here. Somehow, right? Yep. Right, like this. I got through that slot. Pull through. Don't pull too hard because this is what's on the other side. And if that goes away, you're screwed. All right, well, not really. You can push her back there, but who wants to do all that if you don't have to? So we'll kind of slide that into here, all right? Put that in to here. All right, yeah, that's good. Back this off all the way. Take this here. Get this lined up. Screw that in. Oh man, where are you gonna come in? Trying to keep it in in the pedal, in the groove here. Okay. Hmm. I'll give you a different angle.
hole it's up and into there I can tell you one thing now I just do not feel confident that's gonna stay and then if I end up having to get a new uh, A new break. All right. We'll see what it does for now. Famous last words. So this thing was still clapped out when it came. When I got it, it had no front brake, right? And this was a chore to find. I'm sorry, it was easy to find, a chore to get the right one. So the part says for the rear okay i ordered the rear i mean i'm sorry i ordered the front I put it on it didn't line up i was like this is strange it says front so i ordered the front again return the other one same thing contacted the uh the the seller and they said yeah get the rear i was like okay but the rear is for the rear right so anyway the rear is for the front, okay? So if you're gonna do this, you need to get the rear for the front. I'll give you the link to the part. All right, so don't be don't be scared when it says rear and you're trying to get the front. And if you want the rear, go to the front. Okay, so one of the reasons why this is like uh, problematic of a design, right? There's a little C-clip right here. And uh, this C-clip just doesn't have enough, um, it's just flimsy, it's gonna, snap off eventually enough breaking you're gonna this thing's gonna fail so that's the reason why it's uh it wasn't on here i had to get some uh m6 bolts also so i'll give you the uh, part link for that to uh it's uh there they are um m6 i believe they're 1.0 or 1.25 i'm not sure i don't remember and uh these are cap screws and uh they're 30 millimeter in length so 30 millimeters in length because they're going to screw into here all right so let's put it on and see what we got um, let's get a little bit better angle here okay so the way this works right is um wire goes through here feeds down through there and then it clamps onto this 10 millimeter bolt down here yeah, that's what I that's what it looks like. I don't see Yeah, there's a hole. Is there a hole? No, there's no hole. So there's no Oh, yes there is. There's a hole right here. On this side. Okay? So you're going to feed it through here and tighten it down onto that. Okay. So let's get this on. I think that's how that goes, because it has to clamp, so, okay, now it's open. Brakes were closed shut just now, so I couldn't slide it on. Does that make sense? Come on. Get on there. There you go. Alright, good. Got these 30 millimeter, and I hope that it's not it was not a, a bad length to use, cause we're gonna end up with a lot of washers. That's what's gonna happen. All right, so it's uh, it's sticking out a bit back there. Out of washers, we'll just cut it off. One of the two. Yeah, we're gonna. It's close. It's going to touch the brake. Yeah, I think so. That's... I'd rather it be sh longer than shorter, so... 
you could get away with uh, 25 millimeters instead of 30. But I didn't want to take a chance, you know what I mean? So we'll leave this one at 30. Oh, we'll, uh, we'll have to cut this one back. At least grind it or something. Yeah, that's what we'll have to do. All right, All right I'll get your safety glasses. Let's go. That might work. If it doesn't work, we'll have to grind it a little. Alright, what do we have here? Let's see. You think it'll work? These things are so... so... hard to get rid of. Oh, right, it's working. That's amazing. I'm so certain that I would have to grind this off again some more yeah that's perfect okay we're good all right so we'll tighten these down now all right so these are uh, s s fives hopefully i'm getting the names right i don't know if i'm saying the things correctly or not okay that's awesome yeah, so I would say you can either get to 25 millimeter, which would probably save you the hassle of, you know, having to grind. But if you have the tools, I would say get 30 just in case. Because you just never know. Okay, so that's good. We need to uh, find the best routing for this cable here. So I'm assuming we're going to... We're gonna get blinded a little. We're gonna have to go up and down for here. What is here? Down through something. It seems like all the cabling is uh, Sure. I don't know if we're through in the right way. But we're through. Does that make well that bulb has been through a lot with me. I think that's need to slide this into here. Okay. All right, that's good. We're through. Yeah, working on this thing so far really reveals just a lot of like just, just poor design. It's strange to uh, think how badly these things are designed. All right, so we're gonna go on this side over here. You would think that it would be on this side here, the hole. I mean, I can always pull it out. I don't know. Anyway. Okay, so we're in. That's a 10 millimeter, just to let you know. Love this tool, by the way. Highly recommend it. I'll put a link to it in the description. 
worth every penny. Oh yeah. Oh, oh we've got some front brakes. Someone's gonna stop. Whether they like it or not, they're stopping. Yeah, this works well. Okay. Front brakes is good. I think we can tension it up a little bit more. Um, let's see. You know what I mean? Let's just give it a little bit, a little bit more. more fight. Sounds like your boyfriend's coming. Alright, so, here you go. Man, so funny how men compensate for stuff. Let's make it loud! Chevy Thunder! <laughs> Who knows? Alright, let's see. Is that too much drag? I think it's too much drag. All right, let's adjust it a little bit more. Let's lighten up a little. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, all right. That did not go my way. So we got uh, front brakes, that feels good. Say about the back brake, it definitely does not. That's got way too much movement, so we have to adjust that. And the front brake are, you know, they're up. Back brakes are down, that's just a little weird to me. I probably want to adjust that. See? Yeah, let's do so we need to adjust these. I think you can see. It's hard to tell what the camera sees best. It just behaves differently with light, you know. So I don't know. I'm gonna err on the side of caution. Okay, so we have ourselves here a. Um, so this, uh, what size is that? That's gonna be a. Uh, S5? S25? Is that an S2? Uh, I've never... No, it's an S5. Okay. So we gotta loosen this up and kind of pull that through a little bit more. And, uh... to damage it too much. Okay. So we just pulled on that a little here to decrease the range that it has. Tighten that up. Test it. Oh, that's so much better. Yeah, yeah. That's a keeper. Yep, that's a keeper. 
So that's a good, that's a good, uh, good amount of distance we took up. Right there. I just want to show you what we got. We got a pretty good front, and then over here, we got a back. I'm sorry. Let's see, not so much play anymore. It doesn't go that far. So that's my. Man, the things I had to do to get better lighting. Um, so we have a couple things here. We want to adjust this. So that way it's not down so much. And, uh, that's going to give us the opportunity to just want to raise it up some. Oh, but to do that, we need to loose, raise this up some more. Hmm. I will go this far, just because I really, really think it's best to leave this all the way forwards for my little friend. Um, yeah. It's my kid. That's good, right? So now what we have to get rid of is a slop. Right, we have an eight millimeter on this side. Okay, we're gonna tighten it up. <coughs> Trying to get rid of all that sloppiness. I just think it's loose. Better, so much better already. God's flashlight from from us there yeah go. it's, it's a little a little too tight now jeez there you go right there that's it uh, that's the sweet spot no more flop and it tightens the brakes we're good to go we gotta put some air in these tires hopefully the compressor won't kick on <sighs> I had a story for you, right? So, I was looking for a job wrenching, and uh, the guy asked me the worst question ever. He said, do you have any tools? Do you have a lot of tools? I was like, wow, that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence at all. Put it like this. I didn't take the job, and you were on to a bad start. He saw my YouTube stuff. I've talked to him extensively about my experience, and he asked me that question. Craziness. This industry is full of so many like people with trauma because of all the bad things that have happened. You know, it's just it's a crazy industry. I don't really recommend it. I do recommend uh, other industries. But not this one. This wrenching is the worst. So there's a lot of conversation about why this industry is so terrible. You can definitely get on the internet and find it, you know. I'll probably share something a little bit more extensive at some point. But there's a lot of things that happen in it that uh, defeats the purpose of, of what it's trying to do, you know. Which is repair stuff. And uh, all I can tell you is that it just destroys everything from the mechanics getting better to the experience of the owners and, and their vehicles. All right, that's it, we're good to go. So what do you think is going to happen? I have nothing else to fix other than that uh, plate on the side. I got some measurements for it. So it's 58 millimeters from the boat holds. And uh, yeah, that plate, that broken off piece right there. I 
think I can probably find it online. It's obvious that this thing is no longer in alignment. So you can kind of see it's like kicked back one way. So I don't know if it's going to fight me if I do get a new one and put it on there or not. Uh, either way, we're going to test this tomorrow when there's sunlight. Nothing's worse than a YouTube video in the dark. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll see. What do you think? Put your, put your bets in. Pause the video and, uh, you know, talk about it right now if you think it's going to... We did a good job with the carburetor, if it's going to idle well or not. That's really what we're trying to figure out. Other than that, I think it should run. All right. You can also wager on that, too, if you think it's going to run. But we know it'll stop. That's a good thing. All right? All right. I'll see you tomorrow. This is a choke setting? I forgot already. I, 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 uh, I think I, I marked it. Yeah, I did. Look, this is open. Down is open there. That's a weird scratched up O. So that's open. And then we need to start off with closed. It's a cold start. This is. Uh, See, it says off on both sides. This is going to be on, so fuel can go to the carburetor now. So we got that in the right position. This is enclosed. All right, we are. We're going to adjust the. Uh, I'm sorry. We, we need to like attach a uh, you know, something to this to help us shut it off, so we can ground it out, or we can just go like that. Either way, let's just do it. Alright, I'm living on the edge. I'm not going to attach the uh, ground wire. I'll just hold it by hand. Let's see. Spark, right? I hope. Choke the other way. So this confuses me. I don't know if that needs to be off. Put the choke back on open. I mean, uh, closed. That's a good sign. All right, flip. Choke off. Half choke. Choke all the way. No choke. Choke. Half choke. Maybe I can adjust the idle. Let me try that first. Half turn out. Half choke.
to take off anymore, which is great. Too low of an idle. Let's get it going again. Well, it works really well. Much better than before. I want to share the idle screw again. right here. It's so a good news. We um, I got the bracket out right, and had this like piece of uh, it's a two by forty eight flat steel. It's a one eighth of an inch thick. I'll uh, put the part number in the description so you can get it. And it fits really well. If you look right here, this is the bracket. You notice the bracket's not completely flat. It has a little bit of a curve to it. I don't know if that's intentional. Or did it just end up like that? But I'm not too worried about it because even if we keep it flat, we can just bolt through the other side. Or we can kind of bend this maybe. I'm not really sure. Anyway, so we're going to try to make this bracket. Right, so this is what we have. I'm going to have to go a little higher because... It's somewhere up here we have to drill. Alright, so let's just kind of follow this contour here. Okay. Alright, and I'm going to want to go up, just straight upwards. my reason. Uh, I don't really know exactly how far over I'm going to go, so if I go, just go straight up from the curve, then I'll have more freedom to kind of drill where I need to be, you know? All right, so we're going to start with the uh, harmonic. It's an it's automatic punch. So just all you do is kind of center it. And then you uh, push down. Greatest tool ever. I swear to God, get it. 
I'll give you a link to, link to it. It's my starlet. All right, um, we're gonna have to kind of drill some holes. Start off with like, we'll do like 560 forts. Yeah, I have a piece of wood underneath it just to help us. Uh, You know, just to help us. Let's cut this out. Um, since my compressor is pretty much weak sauce, as soon as I start to uh, cut, it's gonna go off. So, anyway, enjoy it. I'm gonna speed up the video right around now.
let's cut this out. Um, since my compressor is pretty much weak sauce, as soon as I start to uh, cut, it's gonna go off. So, anyway, enjoy it. I'm gonna speed up the video right around now.
think we got pretty close. Here's your original. There we go, it lines up and we gotta try to mark that now at the top. Yeah, so I got a one, you know those cap bolts I got. Those 30 millimeter ones came in handy because we're gonna use one of these with this nut on it. It was the only one I found in my hoard, so I could not believe it. I do need to work on my hoard. And uh, we'll put that at the top. These two are already there, so. Yeah, let's get a washer on that. We gotta go mark this and then see if we can uh, get this all lined up and control some holes. Okay, so this is what we're working with. We got this bracket here, which we're gonna go here. And we need to, yeah, more like that, drill a hole somewhere here for it. See what I mean? Okay. So I can't really do this with, I'm gonna screw this in and then we can line it up and we can kind of play around with it. One second. All right, so I got it all bolted up. I think I might have uh, made a mistake here. Can you see how close to the edge that hole is to right there? So I think I, I gotta redo this template. But I gotta, I'm gonna, instead of like cutting it off here, I'm just gonna let it go all the way up and across. I think that should give me a fighting chance. Yeah, I gotta redo the template. Round two, fight. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering um, how did we get to this place, this is the exhaust system right here. And yeah, all you do is uh, unbolt it from here. There's two bolts right there. And there's two nuts right back here. You can kind of see right there. Is that any better? Right there? No, it's a little dark, but you get the idea. There's two right here, just unbolt those. And then you just kind of slide it out. You can see you can work it. I'm not gonna, I didn't get, I didn't pull it all the way out because I don't need to. So you need to get it out of the way. So that's what I did. All right, so I kind of have this like uh, loose and tightened. This is our bracket here. When I look in on the side over here, it looks like that bracket was bent. Yeah, I think this was bent. I don't know if you can, I can see it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to bend it back a little. All right, I had to wait to get the right tool, or at least a better tool. So we're gonna use these channel locks here. I just wanna try to bend this back. Wow. All right. Hopefully that was enough. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I like that. Okay. I go a little bit more. I don't want to go too much more as I don't really need to. But let's see, I don't want to damage. <sighs> okay. Let's try. There's a lot of gap there. In an ideal world, right, what I would want to do is uh, put a rubber grommet between there just to kind of absorb the um, vibration. Mm. Could go a little bit more. Nice. Don't push it. That's good enough for me. Yeah, that's good enough for me. All right, let's bolt this together and then try to get a, a line, a dot of some sort back there. So we're on the back side here. I'm gonna try to sneak in here with uh, 
marker. Get in there. So I can make a whole little whoa. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So this is what a proper uh, drill bit, that's properly sh like a sharp drill bit creates, like these nice curly cues. That's saying you get a really good drill bit. So look for that whenever you're, uh, you're drilling into metal. Okay, so we got our hole here. Obviously I didn't get an A for uh, writing syntax. Um, what we want to do is kind of get our starter hole again. So we use our automatic center punch. It's a little strange of a circle here we have going on, but we'll, we'll, we'll work with it. We'll try. I think that's centered. I don't know. Oh well, we're doing it. It's the same thing, start with a smaller straw that you can comfortably start with. And then get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Note to self, let's get a sharper 5 sixteenths bit. Okay, so we didn't do too well, did we? That's all right. I don't want to make it again, but if I have to, I will. So I got some grommets and uh, they need to, I'm gonna misuse a grommet. I'm not gonna put it inside, I'm gonna put it in between. So kind of like absorbs the shock a little bit between the two. And this is what's important. This grommet, because it's an insulated material, right? Low valiance. I need to make sure that the the nut and bolt goes all the way through, gets to here, and make sure that it has a solid connection because our ground strap, this needs to touch it, you know? So this strap, remember that? Yeah. Okay, so let's bolt this up, shall we? Okay. So we have these uh, silver Notice that I had to put this one on first because I'm sorry, just bumped you. Because the other one gets a little misaligned. I'm sorry, that one gets misaligned pretty badly if I put it on second. So I notice I just kind of put this on first. So I'm just going to put them all on and do it in a way that. 
they are loose but started, right? Because I need to get the top stuff set up. So we're going to do two washers, one lock washer, one washer, and one washer in the back, one washer in the back, one washer in the front with a lock washer. That M30, M10, M6 by M6 by I think it's one. Well, I don't know thread pitch, but it's an M6 by it's like 30 millimeters. We use that. That's a cap screw. So uh, we need to get that through on the top. So we're gonna go. Uh, the pretty washer. We're gonna lock washer, regular washer, like that. Then we're gonna get that there. Mm hmm Just like that. Keep keep hitting you. Sorry about that. Right, so we put the grommet in between. And on the back side, just gonna screw that down. All right, just like that. <laughs> yep. All right. That's what we're doing. I think we should spray paint this. What do you think? Nah. All right. So on the back side, all right, we have a 10 millimeter. On the front, we have this, which is not the right size. I didn't, ah, I didn't connect this. Why didn't you tell me? All right, start all over. Let's try this again.
That's it. We're good to go. I'm just going to bolt up the exhaust and uh, try it again with the kill switch and see if it actually turns off the spark. Okay, so we didn't do too well, did we? That's all right. I don't want to make it again, but if I have to, I will. So I got some grommets, and uh, they need. To, I'm going to misuse a grommet. I'm not going to put it inside. I'm going to put it in between. So it kind of like absorbs the shock a little bit between the two. And this is what's important. This grommet, because it's an insulated material, right? Low valiance. I need to make sure that the the nut and bolt goes all the way through, gets to here, and make sure that it has a solid connection because our ground strap, this needs to touch it, you know? So this strap, remember that? Yeah, okay. So let's bolt this up, shall we? Okay. So we have these uh, silver Notice I had to put this one on first because I'm sorry, just bumped you. Because the other one gets a little misaligned. I'm sorry, that one gets misaligned pretty badly if I put it on second. So I notice I just kind of put this on first. So I'm just going to put them all on and do it in a way that. They are loose but started, right? Because I need to get the top stuff set up. So we're going to do two washers, one lock washer, one washer, and one washer in the back, one washer in the back, one washer in the front with a lock washer. That M30, M10, M6 by M6 by, I think it's one, well, I don't know, thread pitch, but it's an M6 by, it's like 30 millimeters, we're going to use that. That's a cap screw. So, uh, we need to get that through on the top, so we're going to go, uh, put the pretty washer, we're going to lock washer, regular washer. Like that. Then we're gonna get that there. Mm hmm Just like that. Keep keep hitting you. Sorry about that. Right, so we put the grommet in between. And on the back side. Just like that. <laughs> yep. All right. That's what we're doing. I think we should spray paint this. What do you think? Nah. All right. So on the back side, right, we have a 10 millimeter. On the front, we have this, which is not the right size.
That's it. We're good to go. I'm just going to bolt up the exhaust and uh, try it again with the kill switch and see if it actually turns off the spark. Well, I hope you liked the video. It was a lot of fun uh, wrenching on this uh, clapped out six moto hole shot, they call it. So yeah, it's called a hole shot. Um, anyway, listen, it was a good time. Uh, I ordered the uh, bracket if it comes in time. I'll uh, make a f uh, add it to this video and you can see me uh, put install it. Other than that, I think this is it. We're, we're you know, I want to give it to my kids so you know they'll have to ride it without the uh, bracket if it doesn't come before this video is released but anyway thanks for hanging out hope you uh, have a great day and uh, remember if I can do it you can do it yeah okay whatever all right I'll talk to you later and I'll see you next video all right give it a thumbs up thumbs down don't forget to subscribe if you can makes the channel grow and the grow the more it grows the better the content all right, have a good day.